Okay, so today I want to talk to you about something that's really been stressing me out. We still have kids who are really, really struggling with fractions. Um, and I've done, like, a lot of things. I found this notebook that a kiddo has made. We have, like, um, this practice in here, and you've got a list of multiples, of all the multiples. So when they need it, they can go to it. And here they've written down, like, all of the steps. And I was thinking about this, and just how many things that they have to do in order to be able to add or subtract a fraction. I was like, there's... There's got to be a simpler way. So I seriously went online to um, Pinterest, and I just typed in, like, easy way to add fractions, and I found something, and I think it's better, and so I wanted to show it to you in the hopes that maybe a couple kids would watch it tonight and that they could, like, um, come in with the knowledge of how to do it tomorrow. So let's just take a really simple problem, like 3 and 1 half, minus, um, I, wrote, I wrote it down, 2 and 1 fourth. So this problem, what we would need to do is we would need to turn these into improper fractions, and then we'd need to find a common denominator, and then we would need to actually subtract, and then we'd need to take that and turn it back into a mixed number. And that's just a lot of steps, and it's a lot of places where a kid can make a mistake, but this is actually a little bit simpler. So the first thing you do have to do for this is you do have to turn them into improper fractions, but fifth graders should be quick and snappy at that. And if your kiddo is not, if you're studying with them for their test and they're finding that they're not, that's something you need to be working on. So to turn it into a um, improper fraction, we're going to take the 2 times the 3 and add the 1. So that's going to be 7, and then we're going to leave that over 2, minus 2 and 1 fourth is going to be 4 times 2 plus 1, which is 9 over 4. Now this is where it gets a little bit complicated, and I'm going to switch marker color. So I'm going to draw a butterfly. Here's my butterfly. And here's my butterfly, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do for my butterfly is I'm going to multiply these two guys right here. Okay, so I'm going to multiply those. 2 times 2, or 2 times 4 is 8. Easy peasy, right? Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this wing right here. So in this wing, I have a 7 and a 4. 7 times 4 is 28, okay? Then over here, I'm going to multiply this wing. 2 times 9 is 18. Okay. Then I'm going to subtract at the top, and I'm going to just put down this number right here at the bottom. So this is an 8, and 28 minus 18 is 10. If I turn that into a improper fraction, a, oh, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Don't pay attention to that. 10 divided by 8. 10 goes, 8 goes into 10 one time, minus 8 is equal to 2, remainder 2. My quotient becomes my big number, 2 over 8. So 1 and 2 eighths, which is the same as 1 and 1 fourth, that's my answer. 1 and 1 fourth. And I just feel like there's a lot less, this I think seems a little bit less intimidating, minus my chicken scratches over here. And um, I think it seems simpler for kids. Like, and it works for addition, too. Um, so I'm hopeful that this is going to be helpful and that maybe that will relieve some of the stress off some of the kids who are so stressed out about this. So I'm doing everything I can at school. Hopefully you are studying at home, and we can get through this. Huzzah.